him his gloves. Father Christmas had a stocking, though you may be quite aghast to learn that every Christmas it lay empty on the half. This year, he said, I'll find the time to fill it up a little. A small cigar, a generous jar of special yellow pickle. But first, he said, I must address the reason why I'm here. For giving, not receiving, is what Christmas means each year. I must remember Timmy's gran. He says she's very old. A pair of gloves, he said she'd like, because she feels the cold. Now what about young Timmy? He's a tricky one to help. As never will he ask of me a present for himself. Samantha says she loves to sing, and could she have a harp? The twins said bring just anything. I need to make a start. The air was clear, and faintest hint of snowflakes did descend, and on the close of Christmas Eve his work did almost end. There's one more house we have to do, the reindeers understood. Young Timmy's home stood all alone in seven ashes wood. Young Timmy's eyes were tightly closed as Santa left his gifts. I would have liked to speak to him if I could have a wish. But I am Father Christmas, and that really wouldn't do. God bless you, little Timmy. There are few as good as you. He slowly climbed upon his sleigh. Well, that's another year. The chance of finding pickle or cigars are gone, I fear. Then Timmy's door did open, and just running through the snow was Timmy in his dressing gown, his cheeks an orange glow. My granny made some pickles, and she really hopes they'll do. They're special yellow pickles made especially for you. Our Santa held them in his hand, and then began to shake. I thank you, little Timmy. Father Christmas rarely takes. The sleigh bells loudly jingled as he left the frosted wood, and Timmy waved with both his arms as only Timmy would. I love you, Father Christmas. Thank you so much for my gloves. What need have I of pickles with the gift of Timmy's love? Be careful what you wish for, as there is little doubt that time will find you grateful or you could have done without.